The Women's Business Center. Your first step to success. You mentioned earlier in the luncheon that you had today that there was several different women at the table, and we're here talking about here in the Rio Grande Valley, there's several different women at the table who did not know each other. What was your best advice to them today? Well, I hope I didn't offend any of them. Carol would have to tell me if I did. <laughs> but I, 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 I used the pointing finger and said, you need to connect to you because you are collaborators. Your people that can help accelerate your businesses together. And you need to look around this room and figure out who can be a team member for you. Because it's better to outsource to a woman who's local than it is to try to get talent from India or China uh, who you don't know their backgrounds in and you have a, a time element. So I, I urge everyone to go to as many networking meetings as they can. I would hope that here in the Valley you can create a strong women's network because it's it's absolutely vital to giving women uh, the, the support that they need because it takes a whole lot of courage to be in business on your own. And there are moments when all of us have that doubt that we're not going to be able to make it or why am I doing this? You know, well, I think that we need reinforcement at those moments to be our best. And so that's why I like to see women supporting women. I like what you said that a strong networking organization get involved in your community. Get involved, get to know the different women. That's fantastic. Um, one question that we normally ask people we interview, <coughs> how important is personal appearance as a woman? How important is personal appearance? Well, you're asking me on a day in which I've had a <coughs> three hours of sleep in the last two nights. So obviously, if I accorded that a great deal of priority, I probably wouldn't have agreed to be on screen. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I think you have to emphasize that um, the way you look gives you confidence. And it's your first calling card when you walk into a room. And if you walk in well-dressed, you're going to feel more confident. If you walk in and you have been exercising at the gym and you are, you know, you are in good condition and you are not overweight, if you are walking in and your makeup looks like you have actually tried a little mascara before you came into the room, uh, this all gives you a sense of presence. And, and I think that sense of presence echoes through the way people respond to you. I would not overemphasize it, but I think it's very much uh, an aspect of being effective in a business environment. I mean, just think for yourself. When you have a snap judgment, you see somebody in an elevator, you see somebody walking into a restaurant, you see somebody walking into a conference room, the first impression you have is an impression that's hard to change. And so you want to have your best foot forward when you walk into a business environment. Very true. Very true. What is your favorite phrase? <coughs> uh, I guess it would be uh, uh, to those to whom much is, ex uh, is given, much is expected in return. We are very honored to have you here. When I heard you are two terms, a state controller for the state of California, what a responsibility. To me, it's just like, my goodness, how did you do it? Well, what's interesting <laughs> is how did I do it as a, a mother of two children at the same time because my children were uh, three and four when I was elected. And so, um, you know, flying around the state and having them as my, my priority on a personal level and making sure I was a room mother. And I was a football commissioner for my son when he played football. And I was a Boy Scout um, leader. So I tried to integrate that. On a political basis, uh, I was uh, very excited to be state controller. I was the first businesswoman, uh, first business person, period, to serve as state controller. Wow. And uh, the first woman in the country uh, who served as an elected state controller. Now you have one here in Texas. <laughs> uh, so it's, it, it's the first in a long year of lies. But I think what we did try to do is be, uh, uh, we had a customer service mentality in, in the controller's office. I came in as a businesswoman and I wanted to make sure that we treated the taxpayers' contribution with great respect. People work hard and when they pay their taxes in the state of California, they should deserve quality service. They should deserve a responsive government. They should deserve a, a, a government that doesn't waste their money. 
And so that became our kind of our mantra. And so it was uh, exciting, demanding. I sat on 58 uh, boards. And interesting to the women's audience, I was the only woman on 55 out of 58 of those boards. So uh, it was it was a, an environment that demanded that I have my A game at all times. And it, it was a rugged environment because coming in as an outsider, uh, you know, and you, you demand performance and you demand accountability, you're gonna end up with a few few enemies out there who, who see you in negative terms. And I think women in elected office always pick up the baggage of negative terms, you know, the issue of whether you're tough or you're aggressive. You know, a man is viewed as assertive and effective, but the woman has the more negative Howard words associated. And I, I really doubt that most men, uh, when they write about them, talk about what they're wearing during the course of a, of a day. I mean, frequently people would comment on whatever I had to have on, the color, the style. Um, and I don't think they do that with men because the suit is a suit. So, you know, I, it's an interesting experience. <laughs>